Alright guys, well, it will soon be a stormy night here <coughs> in the collapse of everything here on this uh, lovely, it is a Thursday night, I believe it is March 21st, 20, uh, 24, I'm drinking a beer, which I, I do this, I have maybe one beer maybe every six weeks or so. It's not that I'm out of tequila, it's that I'm out of, uh, out of limeade. And so my choice is between just having a shot of tequila, or having a nice cold beer, so. We're gonna have our first Blue Moon Belgian White beer of the spring of 2024 and figure out what to rant about. So guys, I was going to have some fun with this, but there's really nothing I can add to this uh, headline from space.com. Uh, <laughs> you know, our, our, is whoever the clueless moron is wrote this. I, 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 I'm not going to insult your intelligence with, with reading the article. I, I honestly don't know if uh, it is usually editors who write headlines. Was the guy being ironic or not? I honestly don't know if this question was being asked humorously or was it just a straightforward question seriously acting like the subject is up for debate. The question being, how environmentally friendly is SpaceX's Starship? <laughs> okay. If, if, if there's anybody uh, listening to Collapse Chronicles who, who does not know the answer uh, to the question, how environmentally friendly is SpaceX's Starship, uh, we, we, we have clearly had a failure to communicate and if you think the subject is open for debate, then obviously I just just go vote for Donald Trump, okay? Uh, <laughs> how environmentally friendly is this? Anyway, moving on. But uh, so I. As much fun as I'm sure you would have enjoyed me having going through that story point by point, you know, sometimes you just reach a story that, that is absolutely so ridiculous that there's nothing you can add to the mainstream media's headline. But this next one, and I'm actually kind of surprised I've never, I don't think I have ever done a rant on this. And I'm sure you've heard of this thing. And when did it happen? Uh, 70, <coughs> 74,000 years ago, there was some supposedly some big ass volcanic eruption. 74,000 years ago. And I have heard uh, rumors, you know, people were modern humans were still pretty much at that point confined to Africa and I, this giant uh, volcano uh, Mount Toba was in Sumatra so it wasn't right there in Africa or that might have actually done it that, that I that, that's I've been hearing this bullshit for years that this uh, volcano blew up in Sumatra and I never understood where this figure came from claiming that 7,000 humans survived this. 7,000 humans that we, 
we had the population we, we got this close to nipping this shit in the bud this close 7,000 humans on this planet 74,000 years ago you know if, if, if that goddamn volcano you know just 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 one more puff just one one more little puff to take out those last 7,000 uh, humans who never should have been born uh, just think just think uh, of the mess that could have been avoided if, if that goddamn volcano had just you know tried a little bit harder uh, <laughs> So, you know, the claiming, I uh, get it was the nuclear winter, which, you know, 74,000 years ago, what that, you know, another problem I have with this is, is, is that I, I swear I, 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 in other stories I've read about this, they're, they're talking about how crops failed and then like, what fucking crops? I, I, I thought agriculture w w was invented uh, like 10,000 years ago. So who the fuck was growing plants uh, 75,000 years ago? Uh, so I'm, I've always been a little bit confused, but I've never believed this shit. For one minute, uh, there, there's no goddamn way. Uh, well, number one, there, there, there's no way anybody knows to, to, to pull this number it, it, out of your ass like that. 7,000 humans. 74,000 years ago a volcano erupted in Sumatra and we're going to do some back of the envelope math and say that 7,000 humans. Never believe this shit for one minute uh, that, that we were down to 7,000 humans so in 74, pretty much, pretty much in uh, 74,000 years, the population went from 7,000 humans on this planet 74,000 74, years ago to 1 billion, r roughly. And well, in, in 73,800 years, in 73,800 years uh, it is, is how long it took to go from 7,000 uh, Africans to 1 billion humans all over the damn planet and in 200 years more or less 1 billion to 8 billion. 73 thousand eight hundred years seven thousand to one billion two hundred years one billion to at least eight billion and, and, and climbing but anyway we have some new research and I don't mind saying because I'd love to say I told you so all right from CNN, the fake news network, one of the largest eruptions in Earth's history could have wiped out humans. Here is how scientists say some, some of those little fuckers survived. And here we are 74,000 years later. <sighs> All right, about seventy, about seventy-four thousand years ago, Sumatra's Mount Toba experienced a super eruption, one of the largest in Earth's history, <clears throat> potentially, potentially kicking off a massive disruption in the world's climate. But of course, remember that in the world there were only humans living in Africa. So the rest of the world, keep in mind, uh, just went right on about 
uh, figuring out what to do with this shit. I don't even think uh, there it wasn't a, a mass extinction. There, there might have been a little blip, but as far as I know, th th this is another th problem I've had with this. Uh, it, it, as far as I know, I guess I need to look at the at, at the graph. Uh, I don't think that there was any sort of mass extinction event. Uh, chalked up to this thing 74,000 years ago. So somehow, uh, every one of our fellow Earthlings and the other six continents uh, where there were no humans, you know, they, they probably had a bad year or two and figured out uh, how to go on about their business. Well, guess what? Ditto for humans. All right. Some scientists have suspected a volcanic winter resulting from the eruption was a big enough shift to wipe out most early humans due to genetic evidence suggesting a steep drop in the human population. But now, but now, a cutting-edge study on an archaeological site in northwest Ethiopia, once occupied by early modern humans, has added to a growing body of evidence, and then they, which links you over to more research, a growing body of evidence that suggests the event might not have been so apocalyptic after all. Do you think so? No shit, Sherlock. Instead, the new research found humans in that location known as Shin Fa Matima 1 adapted to the arid conditions brought on by the volcanic eruption in a way that may have facilitated humanity's pivotal migration out of Africa to the rest of the world. And this is uh, th th this whole other layer it, it, is that not only was this uh, was the, 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 the real apocalyptic event from this is that it spurred migration out of Africa. Uh, you know, when did humans uh, start leaving Africa? You know, when there weren't, you, you, you know, uh, cargo ships to hide in or they uh, are, are crawling under the landing gear of, of uh, airplanes heading to Honkyville and rubber dinghies and, uh, in, 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 uh, in, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Uh, when, when humans uh, first started figuring out how, you know, uh, how to get the hell out of Africa, uh, which is what humans have been trying to do for the past 74,000 years, is figuring out how the hell do I get out of this shithole continent? And guess what? This goddamn volcano uh, it was one of the reasons, like, I'm, I am so done in this place, we're going to head north to Honkyville and bash us some mammoths. Uh, you, you can walk right up to these things and hit them with clubs, like the elephants here that we evolved with, they run away from us. But uh, if, if we just get our asses uh, up, up north, we can walk right up to these hairy elephants and hit them over the head with clubs. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm losing track of the, of the story. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Microfragments of volcanic glass found alongside stone tools and animal remains in the same layer of sediment at the site show near Ethiopia's Shinfa River show 
humans were occupying the site before and after the volcano erupted more than 4,000 miles away. Wow. This was actually coming from a study at the University of Texas in Austin. Okay. Uh, by piecing together clues from the fossils and artifacts found at the site, along with geological and molecular analysis, the team began to understand how the humans living there forged right on ahead, being humans, doing what humans do. They just forged right on ahead, despite the likely climate shift that the volcanic cataclysm triggered. I think, Book Hermit, you will be a big fan of this study. And what was the big secret? The big secret. Drum roll, please. Catching fish! Catching fish. Catching fish. <laughs> what, what, what was the big, uh, what was the big technological advance? To understand the climate around the time of the eruption, Kappelman and his colleagues analyzed oxygen and carbon isotope, blah, 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 uh, from ostrich eggshells and mammal teeth. That work shed, on, shed light on water intake and revealed that animals ate plants that were more likely to grow in drier conditions. Uh, is, is, is this unbelievable how they do all this stuff? So an analysis of the site's flora and fauna also found an abundance of fish remains in the aftermath of the eruption. The finding is perhaps not surprising given how near the site was to a river. But fish are rare in other Stone Age sites from the same period. Huh. Quote, people start to increase the percentage of fish in their diet. When Toba comes in, they're capturing and processing almost four times as much fish as before the eruption. We think the reason for that is because if Toba is in fact creating more aridity, that means it's going to be a shorter wet season, which means a longer dry season. So the, the team theorized that the drier climate counterintuitively explains the increased reliance on fish. As the river shrank, fish were trapped in water holes or shallower streams where hunters could more easily target them. <laughs> anyway, guys, this, this, this goes on and on. Uh, and then the, the, the uh, uh, all right, a couple more paragraphs, then it gets way too technical. Uh, okay, uh, two more paragraphs. All right. The fish rich water holes may have potentially created what the team described as a blue corridor along which early humans moved north out of Africa once they were depleted of fish, meaning the water holes. So, uh, so you, you have this, uh, this climatic event while all of this dust and shit's in the air, fucking everything up, Fuck it up the river, so it makes it easier. This is a wild theory, but I, but I, but I'm not. Uh, of course, it's being hotly debated, but I kind of like it. 
So, because uh, it, it's just so human. It's just so fucking human. Okay? So, uh, you have this big eruption. All of this shit happens with the climate. While, while all these other animals and all these other continents are like, what the fuck do we do now? Uh, the river dries up. Uh, the flowing river so the humans can just walk right up to, to these uh, water holes that, that are now full of easy to catch fish. And they just march on out of Africa, going from one water hole, they, they eat all the fish in that water hole, there, there's not a fish left in that water hole, so they look at each other and say, we can sit here and starve to death, guys, or we can go to the next water hole. I bet it's full of fish. They went all the fucking way to Europe doing this. Or at least the Mediterranean. I guess they bumped into the Mediterranean Sea. Now that was one hell of a water hole. Uh, all kinds of fish in that son of a bitch. Anyway, so this blue corridor where the, the, the early humans moved north out of Africa once they were depleted of fish. Now this theory does contradict most other models that suggest that humanity's main migration out of Africa took place along green corridors during humid periods. And um, this is some uh, I, I don't know, that this person, Ludovic Slimak, who is not involved in the research, so I don't know why the hell they were, why, why the hell they were asking someone who wasn't involved. You see this all the time in these things. So the, the, the mainstream media, you know, they, they cover these studies and then they interview somebody who was not involved in the study. Um, maybe they teach things different. Now, when I was in journalism school, this is just the way I was taught. Maybe they teach differently in journalism school. Now, I was taught, okay, in journalism, in journalism school, that if you're covering something like this, and you, and, and you find this interesting piece of research, and, and, and you have the names of everybody involved in the research, what you want to do is interview the people involved in the research. But more and more uh, in the mainstream media, I see this all the time, where they interview this person and then they say who was not involved in the research. So this person uh, was not involved in the research. I have no clue why the fake news network would talk to them, but we're going to close with this quote. Quote, this study demonstrates the great plasticity, the great plasticity, I don't think they're talking about eating microplastics and right here. The study demonstrates the great plasticity of Homo sapiens populations and their ability to adapt easily to any type of environment, whether hyperhumid, can you say, you know, what do they call that, the wet bulb, or hyperarid, including during catastrophic events, such as the hyper explosion of the Toba volcano close quote, and uh, then it, 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 it goes on and on and on. It gets way too deep. But, uh, you know, this is just, uh, it, 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 and I have to sheepishly admit that these climate change deniers are probably going to jump on this shit. And, and, uh, and, 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 and guys, I'm, I'm not a damn climate change denier, uh, uh, but you, you, you've got to be honest with yourself. Uh, a, a growing body of evidence 
uh, suggesting that uh, th th this goddamn catastrophe, this this climate crisis, seventy four thousand years ago, was not the fucking apocalyptic event uh, that that all of these people have made it out to be for all these years, uh, and, and, and these goddamn humans uh, d d just figured out. Uh, a way to deal with it, and they and it actually made the goddamn uh, human infestation uh, of this planet even worse. Uh, we're so fucked. So close, but anyway, I gotta wrap this up. I am exhausted for my. Uh, apocalyptic event creating down there and my new real estate investment. I am dog tired. I'm going to drink this beer and go to bed. Get out there and survive your upcoming apocalyptic event while you still can. My guys.